Adam B. here today at the Craft Music Gallery. Today we're going to take a look at the Casio Salviano AP550. This is a really nice instrument. 88 fully hammer weighted graded keys. Comes with 26 different tones. You're going to find grand pianos, electric pianos, strings and organs. It's got a powerful 40 watt speaker system and the ability to connect to your tablet. And you'll want to do that because you can interact with Casio's app and customize the sound of your AP550. You'll notice the button on the lower right hand corner of the piano to turn on the instrument. And then you'll notice on the left, there's the control panel. That control panel allows you to change your sounds, to use the metronome to engage with the song recorder. And then Casio has really streamlined this design, so there's not a lot of buttons. To change your sound, it's a system of holding one button on the left and then touching a corresponding key on the piano, which gives the piano the command. And Casio has identified each of the keys they're labeled. So if I want to hear an electric piano, I can touch this key. If I want to hear strings, I can touch that key. I don't have to memorize the message that each of the keys gives to the piano. You'll notice that the AP550 has an opening lid. One, this is pleasing aesthetically, but two, there's speakers under the lid. So when you open it, it allows more sound to come in your room and it's going to be a brighter tone. You'd have that same effect on an acoustic piano that has an opening lid. Of course, AP550 is a dynamic instrument. It behaves like an acoustic piano. When I play heavy-handed, it's going to be louder. When I play lightly, it's going to be quieter. However, this piano also has a master volume knob, and you're going to find that located on the right-hand side of the instrument. AP550 also has a slow-closing key cover, and not one, but two headphone jacks, so you or you and a partner can practice in private. Many pianos in this class allow you to sculpt your grand piano tone, and the AP550 is no exception. AP550 will allow you to change things like the virtual reverb, what kind of room you're in, how much reverb there is, whether it's a very bright grand piano or a very dark grand piano or somewhere in between. You'll also have full control over some of the mechanical noises and sounds that we experience on an acoustic instrument like string resonance, damper resonance, key off noise, those kinds of things. So you can really dial in your preferred grand piano tone, you can store it, and then have your favorite grand piano sound every time you approach your instrument. AP550 offers a couple truly unique features that we've not seen in a digital piano before, and well, we've seen just about all of the digital pianos. So these are pretty exciting. First of all, there's the visual information bar. This is a bar on the front of the piano that lights up. It lights up based on my velocity. The harder I play, the brighter the light. The other use for this bar is if I've got the metronome on, of course I can hear the metronome, but now I'm going to see the light flash in time with the metronome. So that's a useful aid. The other really unique feature about this piano is the replayer. This is a unique recording situation where maybe I'm improvising, maybe I'm writing, not really sure where I'm headed, but I'm experimenting with music. <gasps> And then I just played something really fantastic, but I'm not sure what I did because I did it in passing. I can go back. The replayer feature captures everything I've done up to just about five minutes. So that's a really unique feature. If you're just kind of spitballing some ideas, you stumble upon something remarkable, you want to go back and study what you just did, replayer will get you there. I'd like to tell you about the key action in the AP550. Casio calls it the smart hybrid Hammer action. This is a fantastic feeling key. It feels very authentic and very natural. And mechanically, it's one of the more quiet actions on the market. In fact, Casio says it's the quietest one on the market, and, and we concur. Why is this important? Well, in digital pianos, we tend to turn the volume down, or we practice in headphones. And oftentimes, what you're left with is thump to thump, 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 thump. All pianos are going to make some noises when you play. But this action's relatively quiet, and that's, that's a good thing. Another thing I really appreciate about this key action is whether I'm on the front end of the key or the back end of the key, it's very responsive. If I've got a tricky passage and I have to have my hand towards the back end of the key, it responds just like you want it to. Let's take a look at interacting with the piano and selecting tones and 
utilizing the instrument's various features and functions, not only from the panel itself, but also with the Casio Music Space app and my tablet. All right, so let's take a look at some of the panel options here. First of all is my power button down here on the right. Above that and in a little bit is my master volume. Come on over to the left and just touch this bar. Well, there's all my controls. They all light up. So from here, I can do things like access the metronome. I can use the recorder and various other features, but I can also change my tones. Change my tones by touching this grand piano button and then a corresponding key to the tone that I want to hear. So there's my electric piano. Again, touch and hold grand piano and another corresponding key to send a message to the instrument to change tones. I just touch this A flat, which is going to be a digital electric piano. After just a few moments, you'll notice that that panel goes dark. And I like that because when I'm playing, I don't particularly want to see it. So I, I consider that to be a very nice feature. Now when I'm ready to engage the piano again, maybe change my tones, if I just touch anywhere on that bar, it illuminates. And I can go ahead again. And if I want to go just back to the basic grand piano patch, I can just touch grand piano. There's many features within the AP550 that are unique and fun to interact with. I find them particularly most interesting when I use the Casio Music Space app and my tablet. So let's take a look at some of these features and functions on the iPad. So here we are with the Casio Music Space app, which you can use on an iOS device or an Android device. Here today we've got it on the iPad. Now you notice when I play here, you can see this visual information bar light up, showing the velocity of my playing. You're also going to notice the visual information bar animated as we scroll through and use some of the various settings within the app. Let's start by selecting some tones. Now we've already looked at how to select tones from the panel of the instrument, but here we can do it on the iPad. And I particularly like doing it on the iPad because I can view so much more information all at once. Here's all my piano patches to change the sound. Really, I just touch the one I'd like to hear, and there we go. Let's go back to maybe an organ. So, changing tones, no big deal. Just touch and play. Now let's set up a layer. A layer is going to be two different tones all at once across the entire keyboard. A real common layer is going to be piano and strings. The instrument's going to default to those two tones, but you can choose whichever two tones you'd like. The first thing I'm going to do under layer, I'm going to turn it on. And you'll see my upper voice is a grand piano. And just like I said, it does default to strings as my lower voice. Perhaps I'd like that grand piano to be a different tone. Let's make it a harpsichord. It's just as easy as touching the tone I want to hear. And of course, I could do the same with the other voice as well. So that's a layer. Now let's turn that off and let's take a look at a split. A split is going to be one tone on the lower register of the instrument and a completely different tone on the upper register. Now, in this particular split, I'm going to choose an electric piano for my upper voice. There we go. Head back over. Turn on the split, and it's going to default to a bass for my lower. And that's my split. So splits and layers. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm going to go back here. And let's take a look at some of these other options. Keyboard sound source. Few things here to take note of. One, touch response. Do I pay, play with a very light touch? Do I play with a very heavy hand? Am I right in the middle? 
Or am I going to be focusing on organs that are not typically velocity sensitive, in which case I can turn the touch response off? So look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six different degrees of touch response. I can transpose the instrument up or down in half steps. I can tune the instrument or detune the instrument. Some scale options. Hammer response, key off response. Now let's take a close look at the acoustic simulator. The acoustic simulator provides you the ability to customize your grand piano tone with nuances that you would experience on an acoustic piano. Being in the digital world here, you can choose how much of each of these attributes you'd like to hear in your tone. For example, the lid simulator. Now, while I do have a physical lid on this piano, I also have a virtual lid, like on a grand piano. Is it fully open? Is it quarter stick, half stick, or is it closed completely? And what you'll notice is that when it's closed completely, you get a bit of a darker, more muted tone. Whereas if it's fully open, I'm gonna get a much brighter tone. And then there's some in-between options as well. String resonance. We can turn that off or we can max it out at four. What's gonna happen here is, if I happen to be holding some other notes and then I play, you're gonna actually hear those notes ringing on. Can you hear those? That's your string resonance. Right now I've got it maxed out, but you can choose how much of that you wanna hear. There's also damper resonance, there's damper noise, key on, key off. So there's some features here to allow you to create your favorite grand piano tone, and then you can recall it later. So every time you come near piano, you can experience your favorite grand piano tone. Let's take a look at some of the effects that are available to us here. First of all is the reverb. Reverb, there's so many options here, whether you're in a, a different room or a hall, maybe you're in a stadium. So a room reverb. Versus, say, a British stadium. Hear how it kind of washes over even after I've stopped playing. Now there's a variety of reverbs in here, so chances are there's one in here that's going to suit your tastes just perfectly. The chorus effects, I find those particularly useful on sounds other than grand pianos, like electric pianos or strings. Let's give one a shot. Let's go back over to tones. Let's go ahead and grab an electric piano. There we go. And right back over to effects, chorus. Here it is without chorus. And I've got four options. We were looking at reverb a moment ago up here with the different types of reverb, but down past chorus, I can choose how much of that reverb I want. So here's the maximum. Or I can bring that all the way down and just have a little bit of it. See, the particular reverb I have chosen now is a longer reverb. This control here is just less of it. So if I wanted a shorter reverb, I would choose a different reverb up here. Probably room. That's going to be a shorter reverb. There's a couple different ways you can record within the AP550 and using the app here. There's MIDI Recorder. 
this is not an uncommon recording feature. Many digital pianos have a two-track recorder. What I'd like to show you here is the instant replayer. What's going to happen here is I'm just going to start playing, and the, the app in the instrument is going to remember everything I've played for the last uh, just about five minutes. Let's say I was playing nonstop for 20 minutes. And in my last minute, I had the most brilliant idea. I could come up here, press play, and I could listen to the last almost five minutes of what I've recorded. That's what's so unique about the instant replayer. If I've worked up my performance and I want to record my entire song from start to finish, that's where I would use the MIDI recorder. So two different recording options for kind of two different purposes. The MIDI recorder for my final performance. The instant replayer, more useful if I'm improvising or just kind of noodling around looking for some fresh new ideas that I might stumble upon. So that visual information bar can be a lot of fun to see the velocity of your play in there or to follow the metronome, but maybe you don't want to see that when you're playing. And you can. There's some brightness options, two, one, or turn it off completely. And now that I've turned it off, no matter what I do, it won't light up. But we like it, so we're gonna go ahead and put that back on. The very last thing I wanted to show you was the mixer. The mixer is a couple different things. First of all, when I've got a split or a layer, I can choose how loud I want each part to be. Right? So if I've got a layer of piano and strings, but I want the piano to be a lot or a little louder than the strings, I can work with these sliders to achieve that. Same with the split. Maybe I want the left hand a little louder than its preset. So I can get in here and I can adjust that as well. This piano also receives audio wirelessly. So perhaps I'm using the piano speakers as a Bluetooth speaker. I've got volume control over that on this page as well. And those are some of the features within the Casio Music Space app. Once again, I'm Adam B. here at the Craft Music Gallery. I'd like to thank you for watching and learning about the Casio Salviano AP550 here with me today. If you have questions about this piano or any of the instruments we carry, we hope that you'll reach out and contact us.